Withdrawal would have increased the probability that coalition troops would be forced to return to Iraq one day and confront an enemy that is even more dangerous. Failure in Iraq should be unacceptable to the civilized world. The risks are enormous. Oh boy, he was, every time I hear that, uh, he was so on target, was he not? Joining us now is Dr. Richard Brennan, Jr., senior political scientist at the RAND Corporation and former career army officer with the Department of Defense. Welcome, doctor. Thank you for inviting me. My pleasure. All right. Um, you know, uh, he was right on, George W. Bush was, about uh, what we would face in Iraq if the circumstances uh, uh, were to uh, be as they are now, as uh, we did get out of there totally. Uh, and now it, it looks like we're doing the same with Afghanistan. I mean, I, I can't comprehend how that's even possible. Well, there, there should be some very uh, significant lessons learned from what we did in, in Iraq. As you recall, the, the military re recommended maintaining at least 16,000 troops uh, post-2011 to ensure that the Iraqi security forces had the capabilities necessary to fight a, re a resurgent al-Qaeda in Iraq, which is the predecessor of today's ISIS. But what we're seeing in Afghanistan is very, very similar. You still you have a dysfunctional government. You have an Afghan police force that is incapable of doing the mission by itself. And Af Afghanistan security forces on the military side that also has the, the very same security deficiencies and capability deficiencies that we saw on the Iraqi forces, except even worse. And we're making a decision to leave in two years so we're right, right back now, if you wanted to go look back at 2010 in Iraq, we're doing the same thing over again. The military is going to have a very successful operation in leaving, but we're going to be leaving in Afghanistan that's not capable of maintaining the security gains that they uh, have, have been gained over the last 14 years. All right, so we've seen what, uh, what that has wrought in Iraq, and it's ISIS. What do you fear we will face if we go ahead with this down the road in Afghanistan? What will fill our vacuum that we will create? Well, first you need to recognize that uh, the Taliban has already sworn allegiance to the, uh, the Islamic State. And there are linkages in, ideologically between the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, uh, the Islamic State, the uh, Nusra Front. front. So they, all these organizations are, are working at, at some level together. They compete with one another, but at the end of the day, they, they work together. And so what we're likely to see is a it's an Islamic uh, state in Afghanistan, as well as having an Islamic state in Iraq and Syria, and uh, not having a, a regional strategy for how do we deal with this problem set. And, and, and if, uh, if that happens in Afghanistan, we know what the overall goal of, uh, of ISIS is, or the Islamic state, and we know what countries they're targeting in the region they're in now. If this does happen in Afghanistan, what, what's the danger going uh, forward as far as other countries in that area uh, that they would have their sights on or other territory they would have their sights on? Well, this is a global inter, inter, uh, ideological movement that's based upon uh, a, an apocryphal view of the world. And as they start getting, gaining success, and as we've seen in Iraq, more and more people from around the world are joining the movement to be part of this uh, grand caliphate that was one day Will, will rule that region of the world. But most importantly, from the standpoint of the United States and the, and the, and the uh, Western countries, it creates a breeding ground where these, these organizations can grow, can foster, can develop, and at some point reach out into the United States and, and countries of Europe. Wow. All right. Now, what, what, is it too late? I mean, uh, we're planning on doing this. Uh, can we, can we, uh, prevent this from happening by leaving a, uh, a force in place? And, and what size force would that have to be, in your opinion? Absolutely. And, and the biggest problem we had when we left Iraq was there was no strategy to mitigate the risks that were being incurred by, by leaving. We need to be doing a fundamental reassessment at the strategic level of what the goals, objectives are in Iraq, how we'll, or in Afghanistan, how we'll continue to move forward on that, and to keep some sort of residual force there for a prolonged time. I think at a minimum, this administration should reconsider uh, removing all forces by the end of uh, 2016 to allow the next presidential administration who's going to have to deal with the aftermath an opportunity to, to shape the, the, that, that uh, situation rather than having to live with the consequences of, of the decisions this administration is making. 
Yeah, well, uh, based on the track record, I, I don't see that happening with this administration. I think, uh, I think uh, everything they've touched has had uh, the same result, and I, I'm beginning to think maybe it's not by accident. Doctor, I appreciate your uh, time uh, and uh, analysis. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for having me. Dr. Richard Brennan, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, look, this is, you know, what, what the doctor has described here is, is, is a very real problem that, that, you know, that's out there. I mean, it was a brilliant analysis by the doctor, and, uh, and I appreciate him coming on and all, uh, but this isn't the first time this has been talked about is what I'm trying to say. The president knows. The administration knows. They have to know what the doctor is saying is true. They have to know that the criticism of the plan that they have in place is true and that the vacuum will be filled by ISIS and that there's an allegiance between uh, Taliban and ISIS and what it will result in. Do they care? That is the question. All right, folks, so we are going to come back uh, with more of the Steve Malzberg Show, of course, and the Malzberg panel. But first, let's check in on the Iowa House race uh, with our Road to the Midterms update. You know, the election is just now, what, five days away, and uh, Newsmax is covering it like no one else. Watch. When Iowa Representative Tom Latham announced his retirement last year, Democrats saw a chance to take back the 3rd Congressional District, especially since they had already found a candidate to inspire a key demographic, women, not just at home, but nationwide. Stacey Appel, who is a mother of six, was applauded by Time Magazine for running, saying Congress lacks representation from young mothers. And as a former state senator, Appel has the political experience to get the job done. Republicans struggled a bit in picking their candidate. Iowa State Senator Brad Zahn won the most votes on primary day, but not enough to keep the race from being decided by a special nominating committee. That committee tapped David Young to run instead. Though he's never held office, Young has had an insider's view of Capitol Hill. He worked for seven years as Senator Chuck Grassley's chief of staff. So who will prevail? According to political analysts, this race is a toss-up. Polls are limited. Both candidates at times have held a lead, where Appel is already winning fundraising. Her war chest is considerably more full, giving her plenty of ammo heading into the home stretch. Firepower she'll probably need as the Republicans look to capitalize on what some called a lackluster debate performance. 